we had breakfast at some nondescript motel. Lunch with he and his... We had dinner in Baghdad. We had brought in a lot of senior members of the intelligence community. Talked to him about our... Several former CIA directors, former DNIs. Well, he was first again the... Then he was the... His command. Some of the audience would find it titillating, to say the least. But uh, I'm not going to go there. If he had gone to one of the military academies, the emphasis would have been engineering, military history, the military codes. But I think what Admiral McRaven got with a journalism degree at the University of Texas was an awareness of a very diverse student population and capacity of a leader. Physical fitness was always a big factor for Bill. And even while he was pursuing journalism, uh, and he was in the ROTC unit, he worked hard to maintain top physical fitness. And that turned out to be essential for his success as a SEAL. He lived a very difficult existence because this was a force that, as we used to say, would, it was a vampire force. It would come out at night uh, and operate during the hours of darkness. You relate fear to combat, uh, but you relate anxiety to everyday life. You don't get a second chance in combat. It's uh, a lot of pressure on a leader to make the right decisions when you're thinking about other lives. When you look back his, over his career, it just seemed to go from success to success. He was the first person to really create a special operations curriculum and graduate it from himself. He certainly had a very rapid rise through the ranks, and uh, when you realize that very, very, very few officers ever make it to the flag officer rank of even being an admiral, let alone uh, much fewer making it up to three-star and then four-star, let alone even fewer getting a combatant command. I mean, he really is in rarefied air there. During the 9-11 time period, he was working on counterterrorism at the Bush White House as a, on the national security staff, and he was the first U.S. Navy SEAL to do that. And he played a critical role in helping shape how the country would respond to that conflict. Admiral McRaven uh, took over a Joint Special Operations Command that had been changed dramatically uh, from what it was when General McChrystal uh, assumed command of it uh, a number of years earlier. Joint Special Operations Command went from doing almost no operations really at all immediately in the immediate post 9-11 era to doing several a month in 2004. By 2006 they were doing 300 a month. McRaven took it to a even higher level of performance. He expanded the force itself over time which is not easy. These are very special special operators. He was a legend throughout the entire national security community for elevating the sophistication of special operations, for integrating the what the operators were doing out at the tip of the spear with the collection of intelligence, with the analysis of intelligence. One of the first decisions President Obama had to make was Captain Richard Phillips. Bill McRaven was in, very instrumental in that, was part of it, and helped shape the character and nature of that. The first people I want to thank are the SEALs, they're the superheroes, they're the titans, they're the possible men doing a possible job. And so that was really the beginning for President Obama of what would turn out to be a very necessary collaboration between the President and, and Admiral McRaven and Joint Special Operations Command. It was in some tough times in Afghanistan and, you know, he said, what would you do if, you know, you only had X months to live or something like that. And we both concluded we would just do what we were doing up to the very last day, if that's what it took. And he actually went out on race with his own men. It's hard to imagine a conventional two or three star general or admiral going out on a raid with their own men. I mean, it just doesn't happen. They gave this huge monumental task to the person they thought uh, would be the best to pull it off. And that was Admiral McCraven. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda. I said, did anybody volunteer who took the shot? And he said no. And then he kind of paused and then he, he started sort of crying. 
as you started thinking about what did it really take to get to the point where we killed bin Laden, there were hundreds of thousands of people who deployed. There were thousands of people who died. There were thousands of men and women who didn't spend Christmas with their families. You know, an example of Bill's concern for uh, those under his command and, and for their families was the initiative that he started as the commander of U.S. Special Operations Command, the preservation of the force and families task force. Uh, this kind of initiative is hugely important, seen to the needs of the force, seen to the needs of their families. This nation owes a debt of gratitude to Admiral McRaven uh, for all the sacrifices, his service to our nation, and most importantly, bring American lives back home to the United States. And finally, after Special Operations Command, that's what brought him here to the University of Texas. I think it's that same skill set, that same record of success, and the, the intangible leadership qualities uh, that come along with that. But changing the world can happen anywhere, and anyone can do it. So what starts here can indeed change the world. I would just like to salute Admiral McRaven, our Chancellor. He's a great friend, uh, he's uh, a loyal buddy, uh, and he's a real shipmate of the highest order.